Okay, let's start class as I announced. We start at nine o'clock. So, in in the previous class, we have derived this relationship, which indicate the steady state nucleation rate can be evaluating by integrating this relationship. And here, Cm is the number of cluster consisting of n atom. And Cn naught is imaginary equilibrium state. And the CN naught is the number of cluster, the number of the cluster consisting of atom N in imaginary equilibrium state. So when we consider the integration of these two parts, we have to determine the integration interval. For the integration of Bn, it is obvious because n is the number of atom inside of the cluster. So the integration interval will be 1, 2, infinite. Then the problem is what is the corresponding integration interval? for this variable, Cn divided by Cn0. <coughs> so in previous class, we have derived that Cn0 is given by C1 not exponential minus kt for delta gn. From this curve, this equation, we can describe the variation of C and not as a function of n, and it will go this kind of downward probability. Because we already know that Gn is given by this kind of shape. So when we put this variable into that, we will have this kind of equilibrium, imaginary equilibrium of the cluster. But you have to remember, the nucleation event occurs in this interval of atomic size, the cluster size. So when the cluster size is less than this cluster, this critical value, then there is no chance for the cluster to become a nucleus. Over this critical size, when the cluster have, has the size over this critical value, then it always can evolve into nucleus. So the ratio of Cn and Cn0 will be 1 in this size interval. And the ratio of Cn to Cn0 over this size 
it will be zero because all of the cluster already become a nucleus. So it is natural for us to think, to describe the distribution of CN follow this curve, this line. And it starts to deviate from equilibrium value and this lower critical size and it approach to zero when the cluster size of the size of the cluster reaches to upper critical value. So when we want to integral <coughs> this equation the interval of integration of this left side will be 1 to infinite. And corresponding integral interval of this right hand side with will be 1 to 0. Right? So, and the, the difference of this to curve indicate how many cluster successfully become a nucleus. Okay? So when you consider the integral interval of these two sides, it is natural that when you integral this part from 1 to 0, it will be minus 1. So the right part of the equation will be simple form, 1 divided by the steady state nucleation rate. And Naturally, we can write down J star will be not dn over one. Okay, and naturally. It is Bn. Okay. Here, Cn not is in by this equation, so it will be. Enough to dominator and then so by integrating this variable from one to infinite, we can have the steady state equation rate. The problem is how we can handle this value and to drive this equation we expand the data GN as with the tail expansion 
around the critical nucleus, nuclear size, n star. Here n star is the number of atom in critical nucleus corresponding to R star. Then when we expand this GN around N star, then it is combination, linear combination of constant and first order polynomial and second order polynomial with corresponding first derivative and second derivative of delta GN with respect to N. Right? Is it correct? Is it okay <coughs> for everyone? <coughs> and from the shape of the curve GN with N, we already know that this first derivative will be zero, right? Because when you consider the curve G, delta G, its first derivative at critical size will be zero. So the first derivative will be zero and then we put these two term, first and third term, into this equation. Then we can ob obtain this form. Here, delta G n star is critical activation energy to obtain the cluster size n star. And it is not dependent on n, so we can put this term into upper side, right? So here g n, g n star, star is missing. Finally, we can obtain this equation. Please put G N star here. I remember that in last class, uh, last the class in last year, some some student raised a question: Where is where? Why there is no star here? So I uh, think that I should fix the problem, but my reasoning. Due to my resonance, I could not fix the equation yet. Anyway, this is final form we want to drive. And when you compare this equation to this one, it is exactly the same form. No question? Yeah. Then the next problem is how this is frequency spectral. This is the number, roughly number of nucleation site. This is the activation energy to obtain the critical nucleus, uh, critical cluster with, uh, sorry, activation energy for to obtain the cluster with critical size. So there is no difficulty in upper part. The problem is the lower part of the equation. Mm -hmm. So problem is how we can handle 
ఇది when we look at the mathematical form of this equation actually this is the simplified when because this is just shift of this type of equation to direction of the n star right so if we can evaluate the integral of this mathematical form then we can apply the solution to evaluate the integral of this kind of formula okay not okay when you look at the shape of the function inside of it right this is just the shift of this function to along the m axis right so when you look at the shape of this function this is the shape of this exponential function and you can see that all of the contribution all of the contribution is located on origin all of the contribution of this function is located at the origin so naturally we can expect that all of the contribution of this exponential function comes from the point around n star right not clear clear okay so if we agree that most of the contribution of this function is located around the point n star then it will not be will not be bad approximation when we changes the integration interval from 1 to infinite from <coughs> minus infinite to positive infinite right it is similar when we consider this is will be the shape of this exponential function so it is that it will be actually good approximate when we integral this function from 1 to infinite or minus infinite to infinite it will be it will give you almost the same result right and then fortunately we have a solution of the integral of this form it is given by square root pi divided by n a okay so then when we turn to our previous slide then this value is can be approximate by square root pi over n pi divided by n so this term 
then we finally we can bribe J star is beta C one not exponential minus K T over delta G N star two And actually, this value correspond to the Zeldovici factors uh, in the first slide. I show you the final form of steady state nucleation rate. Okay, so this is the way to drive the steady state nucleation rate. And now you can understand what is the meaning of each variables in that equation. Next thing is that let's consider the loop value of the frequency factor. Actually, the frequency factor beta is a product of soluta term at the interface and the jump frequency, successive jump frequency into the cluster. Right? Mean that this is the cluster. And how many soluta atom is located in the surface of the cluster and the jump frequency of that atom? So the product of both term will give you love value of the frequency factor. So the number of solo tatum when you consider S star is the surface area of the cl critical cluster, then the number of atom will be given by this one. Here A is lattice parameter. This is the number of atom, log value on the num approximated number of atom at the surface of the cluster. And when we multiply the atomic fraction of solute, then it will give the number of atom at the number of solute atom at the surface of the cluster, right? Here, this value. <coughs> and from the first class, first class of the diffusion theory, we already know the jump frequency is related with the diffusivity. Here, alpha is jump distance and we can approximate that is equivalent to the lattice parameter. Then the jump frequency of atom is given by 60 divided by A square. So this is the product of these two terms and 
it will give love. It is very low value of the frequency factor. <coughs> okay, let's move the homogeneous nucleation in the case of the homogeneous nucleation. How those kind of parameter will be can be evaluated. We already know that the free energy change for one cluster with radius r is given by this one. Here, g delta g v is free energy change per unit volume. You have to uh, you have to know the difference between the free energy change per mole and free energy change per unit volume. I hope you do not confuse two terms. Here G V is free energy change for per volume. This is actually the free energy change this is free energy change for mole and if we divide it by its more volume, then we can obtain the free energy change per volume. And from this equation, you can easily derive the critical equation size, nuclear size, and how much the activation barrier will be. Okay, this is a typical one, and I hope you do not any you do not have any difficulty with this equation. Then when we assume the atomic volume, the volume of one atom inside of the crystal is Va, and n is the number of atom, then Va and Va will be the volume of the cluster. Right? Because VA is the volume of one atom and N is the number of atoms in the cluster. So and VA will be the volume of the cluster and it should be equivalent to this one. And when we put that value This value, this relationship into this equation, then you can drive the free change as a function of the number of atom, right? So this is naturally MVA and when you consider the relationship between the R and this equation, you can have this formulation and with some mathematical arrangement, you can reach this final form. It, it is just simple mathematics. So with this Free energy change, free energy form with respect to the number of atom, then you can evaluate the 
JWG factors and the frequency factors with this and this relationship. And I leave it to your homework to derive the JWG <coughs> factor and frequency factors in homogeneous nucleation event. Too many? Too much homework? But you have to know that the phase transformation is quite abstract subject. So if you do not handle real, how can I say, real number or real situation, it is very difficult to get the concept. So, and also, if you do your homework by yourself and work hard, then you will have less difficulty to prepare the final <laughs> examination. <laughs> because we, only ha we have only one final, one examination, and the range is quite huge. So, I hope you prepare well with the, the, this kind of homework and the problem set, okay? Okay, let's move that, uh, how can we evaluate driving force for the nucleation event? At first, we will handle the single homogeneous system. For example, the solidification of pure substance. Here, as you know, here is the uh, enthalpy and the free energy change, free energy of alpha and beta. And let's consider the precipitation of alpha phase from the beta when we cool down the material. At the temperature where the free energy of alpha and beta is equivalent, then we can write down the because this equation because the free energy of alpha and beta is the same. So with this equation, you can drive delta H is equivalent to T equilibrium with the entropy change. Let's consider the temperature slightly lower than the equilibrium temperatures. Then it will be reasonable that delta H and delta S, the entropy change and entropy change, is independent of the temperatures. In this case, the driving force for the precipitation of alpha from beta is given by the change in enthalpy and change in entropy and the temperatures. And from this equation, you can convert the change of entropy It is not that difficult, so I think you can drive it, okay? So this is the molar value. So when you convert, when you want to convert in volumetric value, you have to divide the molar volume with the delta G. The situation is a little bit complicated when we handle the binary alloy. Here, we consider the precipitation of beta from the alpha matrix. <coughs> and for the simplicity, let's assume that 
the concentration interval of the beta, which means that the, the shape of the French curve of beta is sufficiently narrow. <coughs> narrow. <coughs> so the common co tangent concentration is almost constant. This is the case when the precipitation has quite strict stoichiometric so stoichiometry, like intermetallic compound. So here is our initial composition, xp naught. And then how we can evaluate drive the driving force for the nucleation of beta. To evaluate the driving force in molar Frenet diagram, I always told you that we should compare the vertical line, right? So we want to divide the nucleation event. One stage at step one, we just assumes small area of compositional fluctuation, which does not affect the free energy of the system. How we can put those kind of compositional fluctuation? As I told you, when we consider the tangential line, the point on the tangential line indicate that kind of small compositional fluctuation will not change the free energy of the system. So at first stage, at first step, we assume the compositional fluctuation corresponding point A. At this step, the free energy of the system is not changed. Right? And in second step, then we consider the transformation of this small, very small area into beta. Then you can understand this much of free energy drive the second step event. And this much of friendly change is the driving force for the nucleation of beta phase in our part matrix. Okay? Not okay? From the previous slide, what is the, what will be the free energy molar free energy of material in A point A. This is <coughs> UA naught. <coughs> XA naught. Plus mu b naught x b naught, right? Mm -hmm. 
mu a not x a beta, sorry. All right, composition is changed. Composition, we have to consider the composition here, so. And similarly, we can evaluate the molar free energy of beta at point B, point B here, and the molar free energy is the linear combination of chemical potential of these two value and the composition. And you can write down like this one. So the driving force for the nucleation of one mole of nucleus is the difference between these two value. And we, if we want to convert it based on the volume, the friendly change per unit volume, then if we divide it by molar volume. And you can drive when you put the chemical potential in ideal solution, then the free energy driving force of the nucleation in ideal solution can be given by this relationship. Okay? Finally, I would like to talk about the effect of curvature. Usually, the nucleating phase is surrounded by surface with curvature. So those kind of curvature will apply the pressure to the nucleus and eventually it will increase the free energy of the nucleus, right? In previous slide, we do not consider about the effect of the free energy change from the curvature. So let's see how the situation change when we consider the effect of the curvature. Here is the free energy of the nucleus with critical size R star. And this is the molar free energy of beta without considering of the pressure effect. And this value gives the free energy change per unit volume. So it is naturally equivalent to the previous ex expression, right? because this is delta G V, right? So when we assume, when we put N star is the number of mole inside of the cluster. N star is the number of mole inside the cluster. And this value goes to this one. Right? Because the number of mole number of mole is total volume divided by the molar volume. Okay? Everyone happy with it? No question. Oh, yeah. We already know that the pressure
exerted on the nucleus is given by 2 sigma divided by the radius. No? Look at the textbook of the page transformation. You can easily obtain the pressure exerted on the nucleus. Because that the pressure itself comes from the interface energy. So when we put this value into this equation, Finally, we can drive this formula. It is a simple mathematics. And you can easily reach, obtain this formula from this one with this relationship. Mm. I already drive it by myself. But I hope to read it to you because it's not difficult. So look at this value. <coughs> the free energy of nucleus cluster divided by its mole, number of mole. And this is a molar free energy. Molar free energy of nucleus consists of the molar free energy without the effect of pressure. And this is the additional term comes from the effect of the pressure. <coughs> okay? So actually, the free energy curve of beta is here without any without considering of the effect of the curvature. But when we consider the pressure by curvature, it is increased by this amount, which is 1.5 PVM. OK? As you know, as I explained in the previous slide, this amount, among 1.5 PVM, PVM is given by the driving force for the nucleation, right? This value is given by the driving force for the nucleation then where, where we can get the additional 0.5 PV. One of two PV N star is the additional free energy necessary per cluster, right? Because this is additional free energy per mole. And when we multiply the mole of the cluster, the number of more inside the cluster, then this value will give you the additional free energy per cluster, which overcome the effect of the pressure. When you calculate this one, you finally obtain this value. What is this?
I think you are very familiar with this equation. This equation is exactly the same as activation energy for the nucleation. So, <coughs> when the beta nucleate from the alpha with radius r, part of the free energy given by the driving force. And this amount of free energy, it should overcome by thermal activation process. Okay? Okay, this is the last slide I prepared. Any question? If you want to know more about it, uh, you can visit my office, but there is, uh, uh, the, if you look at the supplement one, supplement one in the E class, there is some uh, part to explore, uh, uh, to explain this concept and you can uh, have some help from that supplement one. Okay, no other question? Okay, then see you in next Tuesday. <laughs>